vehicles for carrying LPG come in various shapes and sizes according to local requirements. But the principles which govern their safe operation are common to all vehicles and all countries. Throughout, the vehicle crew are the key people in ensuring the vehicle's safe and efficient operation. In this program, we shall be looking in some detail at the vehicle itself and at the tasks undertaken by the crew. So, let's look first at the vehicle itself, with its various fittings and accessories. The largest component is the tank, which is made of steel and which can be seen here from the inside. Preferably, tanks and equipment should be designed to meet the specification for handling propane, so that they can also deal with butane, for which the demands are less severe. If your company operates butane-only vehicles, however, only butane should be loaded. The various pipes visible inside relate to the exterior fittings. These fittings vary from one vehicle to another, but they can generally be considered under the headings of instrumentation, product transfer equipment, safety valves, and a manhole. The instrumentation generally comprises a pressure gauge, which is connected to the top of the tank although the gauge itself is fitted lower down for easy visibility. A liquid level gauge is placed on the horizontal centre line of the tank. This can be a simple float operated gauge or a roto gauge. The roto gauge consists of a tube inside the tank which can be turned upwards or downwards. The liquid level is found when LPG liquid escapes from the open bleed valve. A fixed ullage gauge is also provided, although some liquid level gauges can perform this function. The fixed ullage gauge consists of a valve and bleed screws on the outside. Inside the tanker, this connects to a small pipe reaching up to the maximum safe level. Now, the product transfer equipment. Liquid and vapour connections are needed to allow loading and discharge of the vehicle. The hose couplings connect with pipes inside, leading to the top of the tank. As liquid enters the tank and the level rises, vapour can be drawn off from the top via the vapour return line. This reduces the back pressure against loading and allows the pump to fill the tanker more rapidly. The vapour return line should only be used where vehicles are filled by weight. For consumer deliveries, some vehicles are equipped with a meter. Some vehicles have a hose unit of the self-winding type. These may be located at the back or side of the vehicle. All pipework which carries liquid is fitted with hydrostatic pressure relief valves. They are situated between valves and allow vapour to escape when the temperature rises and excess pressures build up. The pump is used for self-loading and discharge of cargo. It is mounted beneath the tank and has a bypass leading back to the liquid space in the tank. Next, Safety valves. There are two pressure relief valves on the tank which are connected to the vapour space at the top of the tank. Apart from these, all the other large openings are fitted with emergency valves such as excess flow valves. These valves will close automatically should the flow in the pipe increase beyond the maximum allowed. For instance, if a pipe should break. These tank openings are also fitted with stop valves. Finally, there is a manhole, usually at one end, to allow inspection of the tank interior. Apart from the items which are fitted to the tank or vehicle body, 
the vehicle should also carry the following essential equipment. Warning notices, which may have symbols as well as words. Wheel chocks, fire extinguishers, a bonding or earthing wire, emergency instructions, protective clothing. The safe operation of bulk LPG vehicles requires that the crew are familiar with all fittings on their vehicle and have been thoroughly trained in all safety procedures. They should, of course, obey all laws and regulations relating to road usage in the country in which they work. Now, let us consider in more detail the correct procedures associated with vehicle operation. First, loading. At the beginning of each shift, drivers should inspect the vehicle to make sure it is roadworthy. Vehicles may be loaded by weight, in which case they must go on a weighbridge before and after filling. Alternatively, loading may be by capacity, in which case the fixed ullage gauge is used to show when the tank is full. The vehicle is then driven to the filling bay, where it should be positioned so as to allow easy evacuation in an emergency. The brakes should now be put on. The engine stopped and the master switch turned off. In some countries, chocks are placed under the rear wheels. In some locations, loading may be carried out by depot personnel rather than the driver. However, it is still the driver's responsibility to check with the supervisor, the product, and the quantity to be loaded. Before loading begins, the pressure gauge should be used to check what product is in the vehicle. The pressure of propane is some two and a half to three times that of butane at the same ambient temperature. Protective gloves should be worn during filling as LPG may cause skin burns on bare flesh. Goggles or visors may also be worn in some countries. The quantity already in the tank is measured by the level gauge to make certain there's enough capacity to take the intended load. The gauge has a pointer on its handle which indicates the tank contents on a dial. The positions of the emergency shut-off and the fire alarm should be noted. The depot or vehicle fire extinguishers should be ready to use, upwind of the loading point. The bonding or earthing connections are made to the point provided. These prevent sparking when the hoses are connected or disconnected. Now check the condition of the hoses and couplings. If they're satisfactory, they can be connected to the vehicle. Any leaks present would be apparent from the smell or from the sound of escaping vapour. Liquid escaping would be indicated by a vapour cloud or frost forming around the leak. If hoses have defects such as these, they must not be used but replaced with new ones. Now, Slowly open the valves in turn, working up the line from the vehicle to the depot. The depot pump is started and filling commences. The driver or plant operator should always be present during loading. Keep checking for leaks while filling is in progress. The level gauge should also be used regularly to monitor the quantity loaded. When this shows that the tank is almost full, the loading rate is reduced. The fixed ullage gauge is now used to ensure that no overfilling occurs. This is extremely dangerous and must be avoided. Once LPG liquid escapes, the safe level has been reached. The tank is full. The valves on the vehicle must be closed and the pump stopped. The valves on the depot filling line and hose end are also shut. 
After checking that it's safe to proceed, the liquid can now be allowed to bleed from the hoses by slightly loosening the couplings. In some areas, bleed valves may be fitted. When no more vapour appears, the hoses can be disconnected. Where depot staff do the loading, it's essential that the driver checks all the hoses have been uncoupled. Ensure that all valves on the vehicle are firmly closed and the couplings properly capped. Then reload the fire extinguishers, wheel chocks, bonding wire and so on. If the load is being measured by weight, then the vehicle should be driven to the weighbridge. Before leaving the depot, all the necessary paperwork should be completed. As in all LPG operations, safety is ensured by developing a careful routine and by attention to detail. When making a delivery of LPG, much of the routine is similar to that used for loading. For instance, the vehicle should be parked so that it can easily be driven away in an emergency. The customer should be contacted and his agreement obtained on the product being delivered and the quantity required. The driver should now check that it's safe to discharge, that there are no leaks anywhere and that there is sufficient ullage to receive the delivery. He should also check that the temperature and pressure are within normal limits. Always remember that putting propane into a butane system would result in a dangerous situation. Now, make the necessary connections. Any defective seals should be replaced. Slowly open the valves on the customer's tank. Then pressurize the hose. Open the valves on the vehicle. Remember to keep checking for leaks. Start the vehicle engine to operate the pump. During discharge, the driver must always keep the vehicle and tank in view. Keep checking the level gauge on the customer's tank. When nearing the end of the load, slow down the pump. If the tank is to be filled to capacity, the ullage gauge must be used to decide the shutoff point. Overfilling is dangerous and correct use of the ullage gauge will prevent it. Now, close one of the valves, stop the pump and then close all the other valves. Now check the customer's tank level using either the contents gauge or the fixed ullage gauge as appropriate. 
the liquid in the couplings can now be bled off and the hose is disconnected. Don't forget that any defects found must be reported. When metered deliveries are being made, the meter should be set to zero at the start and checked regularly during delivery. At the end, check the final figure. Meters are often fitted with a ticket printer, which prints the quantity delivered. By following the correct routine, you will ensure a safe delivery and a satisfied customer.